Being the old radio DJ that I am, I'm going to have to teach Ty Osborne the art of the fade as opposed to just the cold cutting off of the song. Hey, welcome to our Lunch and Learn. We obviously took a week off last week because of Election Day, and uh, we're back at it today, and we've got a good one lined up for you. We're going to be spending some time in the uh, Furman University tennis program with head coaches J.J. Whitlinger, of the men and uh, Adam Herendeen of the ladies program. I am Dan Scott, the voice of the Paladins. We're very excited to have you here with us. I uh, got a few notes I need to run through before we get started in today's program. First of all, next week, we will uh, be visiting the uh, golf coaches here at Furman, Jeff Hull and Matt Davidson. And originally, we had said we were going to take the Tuesday of Thanksgiving week off. We have uh, sent that back to the uh, studio for further review, and they have uh, reversed the ruling. We are going to come back two weeks from today, and we're going to have three of our coaches with us, uh, volleyball coach Michelle Young, uh, Rachel Witten of the uh, lacrosse program and softball coach Wally King. They will all three be with us here uh, in two weeks, and that will be our final lunch and learn through the holidays. And, uh, of course, that's also the week we hope to have some other things really ramping up for us here on campus. Some of the news uh, and notes that you uh, may have seen, may not have, but uh, the athletic department yesterday announced a, a very, very uh, important and exciting deal, a radio partnership with ESPN Upstate for broadcasting our men's uh, basketball and football games. It's also going to include in-season appearances by our coaches. And uh, this takes our, our radio broadcast to a level it's never been in since I've been here as far as, far as the, uh, the quality uh, and size of the station, and, and maybe to uh, it, its best spot in, in the history of, of doing radio here at Furman. Uh, a two-year deal. We're really excited. Both sides wanted to get this done, uh, and uh, partnering with ESPN Upstate is going to be a significant, significant upgrade and uh, boost for what we're doing here in the athletic department, largely in our um, quest to – continue to market ourselves and brand ourselves and become because we are Greenville's team. And, and this is really going to be another, uh, another great tool in our belt for that. So we're happy about that. Uh, National signing day is tomorrow. So uh, as our uh, uh, programs announce uh, athletes who have signed, we'll be putting out that information on social media. You'll see releases and graphics. You can be uh, looking out for that. Also, Veterans Day. We'll be uh, obviously nodding our cap uh, or tipping our cap towards uh, the veterans uh, in this country. Uh, and uh, we'll have some special things going on social media there as well. And I know everybody wants to know when are we going to get some uh, definite and final information on basketball. All I can tell you is that we hope it's coming soon. I know the schedule, the non-conference schedule is getting very, very close. And um, beyond that, all I can tell you is that it'll be ready to roll when we're ready to roll in that, uh, uh, well, two weeks is when uh, the season is, is set to open up. So uh, just keep uh, keep looking, remain patient. Uh, you, just for those of you who don't know, the issues that we're facing from a basketball standpoint are multiple, number one, ESPN canceling the multiple team events that they had scheduled down in Orlando has thrown everybody uh, or, or not everybody, but a lot of teams into a scheduling quandary. And then the, the, the simple truth of the matter is, folks, Furman basketball has gotten so good that a lot of the, the uh, larger teams don't want to play us. Um, it, it's, it's getting more and more difficult to find those kind of opponents, but the coaching staff is working on it. And when that schedule is released, I think you're going to be very, very happy and excited about that. So those are just some of the little news and notes that uh, we have going on here uh, at Furman as we sit now. And uh, let's turn our attention to the uh, tennis program and let's welcome in uh, the uh, men's coach, J.J. Whitlinger, the women's coach, Adam Herendeen. Coaches, how are you guys? Good, Dan. How's it going? Good. 
at Adam, from based on what I've found out uh, late yesterday, you're doing a lot better than JJ right now. Yeah, I think so. I didn't know about that till this morning either. J- yeah. JJ, do you, do you want to tell everybody what happened or do you want to leave it to me to do uh, it? Uh, yeah, no, I can tell everyone. I, I, I took the sling off. So I have a sling here that I've been sporting around all day. I uh, had a bit of an ultimate Frisbee accident. I like to do the uh, team fitness with the guys on the team. Um, and I, uh, took a little, took a little dive and, uh, maybe, maybe tore my AC joint. We're, we're kind of working through that process right now, figuring out what really happened to me, but I'm toughing it without the sling right now, trying to put on a brave face. But playing through pain. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, On the other hand, Adam, if there was ever a time for you to take advantage of this guy on the court, (laughs) now, now would be it, right? Yeah. I think we're going to go out and play some after this. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> sure. Uh, I'll just, I'll, JJ, I'll start with you. Just give us yeah. an update of what's going on in your program right now. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this fall has been a little different for, for everyone, but we're, we're, we're just really fortunate that we got all of our guys here um, to, to kind of have a, a kind of eight to 12 week kind of practice block. And um, cause it, you know, there was a while there where we didn't think we were going to get half of our team in into, into town. So it's different. We're not, we're not competing. Um, we haven't been able to do as much community service, um, you know, Habitat for Humanity and, and children's hospital visits and things like that as we, as we typically like to do, but it's been a, a good opportunity for our guys to um, really focus on their studies, uh, focus on a few things that they need to be doing um, on the tennis court. Cause I think as, as Adam can attest to, um, you know, when you're playing tournaments and you're and you're competing, you don't get to sometimes work on the little things that uh, that you need to do on the practice court, the little fine tuning. So it's it's been good in that respect uh, to be able to do that. And we've also been able to kind of throw in some some new wrinkles to what we've done this this fall. Like uh, Adam's team and mine, we did a, that that kind of purple and white event the other day, and. You know, the, the silver lining is I think we've kind of done some stuff over, over the last few months that we, we might not have done otherwise, and they'll probably be kind of staples of our programs kind of going forward. And Adam, just to piggyback off of that, I, I guess this is an opportunity for you to uh, not only gain a, a bit of perspective on things because you're not doing what you normally do, but it's also a chance to to maybe learn some things about yourself, both as a coach and for your players to do the same thing that, that maybe you wouldn't have time to sit down and, and really do some, that kind of evaluation. Yeah, absolutely. I would, I would agree with everything JJ said there. I mean, we've definitely done everything a lot different. Um, the girls ask a simple question, coach, what's this going to look like? And I, I say, I don't know, let me, let me think about it. Cause we've never done it this way, but like JJ said, a lot of things we've done have um, been, been, really new and a lot of fun. And I think I give our girls a lot of credit. They, I, this semester, you could, you could view it as a challenge with not getting to compete and do what we love, but it's actually been one of my most enjoyable falls just because we have a really nice group and they've worked incredibly hard. And, and to be honest, we're all just more grateful than ever just to be on the tennis court, whether that's just for a second to forget the troubles of the world or um, just because it was taken from us so suddenly back in the spring. So we, we were, fortunate to get everyone back as well. I don't know any other school that probably has all their men's and women's players back. So uh, I think that was pretty special and, and it's, we've tried to make the most of it for sure. Well, and then I'll ask this question for both, both of you. How have you used this time to get better? Adam, you first. Yeah. So uh, one thing we did different this year, I tell the girls sometimes it feels like I'm like running summer camp because we're just doing some things almost that feel like camp, but we've had a different focus every week. Um, you know, normally we have our big Debbie Southern fall classic, the second or third week into school. And so we jump in and it's like, we got to get ready to compete like JJ was saying. And, and so we've really spent a week going, this is the focus of the week, whether you are really good at it and we want to get better at it or whether that's, it's an area of your game that needs to develop. And from the second week, the girls like, I really like this because I, I see the improvement every day. And for, uh, I would say your typical Furman students, they really, really enjoy working hard, but they want to see the progress. And so uh, we've described it as we're trying to put new tools in our, in our tool, tool belt. And so when we can walk out on the court at five, four in the third set and, and apply a new skill. So I think that's been a, a huge part of it. 
JJ, same question to you. Yeah, um, we've used this time to really focus on the details, uh, the, the small little details of our guys' games and their individual uh, kind of workouts with, with myself and, and Sasha, my assistant. And um, that as well as really focusing on fitness and trying to not – not give ourselves any excuses um, when it comes to the fitness side of, of, of our tennis. Um, and we've put a lot, a lot of work in the weight room as well. Um, and our guys wanted to do that and they've really gotten after it. Um, but, but in terms of tennis, it's just, it's since the lack of competing, um, you know, we've had tournaments with, within our team, but uh, with the lack of competing with, with other teams, we've just been really focusing on the small details uh, kind of day in and day out. Well, what we uh, want you to do, for those of you who are on board with us, is what we do every session, and that is use the chat function to send questions for our coaches. Uh, send them to me privately, or you can send them to Ty Osborne, and, and he will forward them to me. But uh, questions for uh, Coach J.J. Whitlinger and Coach Adam Herendine, uh, we would love to have you start submitting those now. And we already have one. You talked about doing the purple-white thing between your two teams. Uh, who was the mixed doubles champion? We had um, we, we separated it into four teams. So we had a purple team, a white team, a gray team, and a black team. Um, and each one consisted of uh, at least two, two men and two women's um, players. So what, uh, what I noticed really, because Adam and I really wanted to make sure that uh, the guys and the girl, they took it seriously and had some fun with it at the same time. So I've noticed that my guys do do really well when I kind of dangle the carrot of a, maybe a Nike product out in front of them. And then uh, they really kind of go all out. So, so I did that and, and it, it, it turned out to be a lot of fun. And I think, I can't even remember what team out of, was it the gray team? No, it's no. team white. It was white. Uh, white. Georgie, Maggie, um, James, and Emil. Emil. Emil and Cole. Yeah. They were pretty good from the start. I mean, we did a little <laughs> format. It was total games wins, yeah. And uh, they were they were pretty uh, they were pretty into it from the first ball. That's for sure. So, did each of you coach two teams, or did one of your assistants take a team? How did that work? We tried to stay out of it. We <laughs> thought, you know, this is our first time doing yeah. it. Um, one 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 of the highlights for me was actually at one point we were playing. Um, and the, there was kind of a gap in between two of the courts. And so my daughters who were two and four and are always at matches and I'm constantly kind of like telling my wife they need to move away because they're too loud. And it can't be the coach's kids that are too loud, but I got to bring my two and four year old out on the court because I wasn't coaching, you know, and, and they were running in circles around me while the kids were playing. It was a, it was a lot of fun. That's good stuff. So team white was the winner. All right. Uh, next question uh, it says a uh, tough question, but what does the spring schedule look like? And do you guys have a grasp on that yet? JJ, I'll start with you. Yeah. Well, we just had a head coaches meeting where we talked about this for about an hour and a half. Um, and I think a lot of it's up in the air. I've had a lot of, you know, some of our alumni, uh, ask about the, you know, sending out the schedule and, and some people that are close to the program. And, um, for us, we're about 90% of the way there. We're, we're working on trying to the best way to utilize our resources and seeing just kind of what, what happens in terms of when all the kids come back, uh, you know, in January and, and across, I mean, not just here at Furman, but it kind of across the landscape of, of what we're doing. And then, and then we're going to kind of, I feel regardless of how, how it goes down right now, we'll, we'll, we will release a schedule in the next, uh, you know, week or two, but there's going to be amendments as we go forward, I'm sure. And then Adam, the, the second part of that question is, is uh, will there be a way for fans to support the players at any home events? I would imagine right now that's up in the air. Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, I don't think I've ever worked on a schedule as hard as I've worked on this one. Um, Scheduling is kind of my, my thing. I, I enjoy the challenge of trying to put together just the right schedule for what our team needs and we did that and then we've changed it and now we've changed it again. And one of the, one of the great things about where, where we are is with our ranking being so high, we have a lot of teams that are still calling us to come to Furman and play. Um, so we have some really big, we have some SEC and ACC teams that are scheduled to come to town and 
Um, our schedule, like JJ said, it's it's right there. It's very close. Just a couple more dates we need to to iron out. Um, but it's a it's a it's probably the hardest schedule I think we've ever played as a program. So we're really excited for that challenge. I think we're reminding our girls of that challenge every day, and and they're working incredibly hard. But obviously, things could change uh, at any point, and that's going to be the the tricky part. Like like everything else, we have to be flexible. Um, I think the hope is to progress towards getting fans to be able to attend. Um, I'm not sure at this point we're scheduled to start our season with Auburn at home on January 16th. So that's a very early match at this point, I would assume uh, that would be an indoor match with, with no fans, but um, we're going to work through those protocols as, as things progress. Hey Dan, I can piggyback on something there real quick. Um, we actually are fortunate enough on the men's side to have a, to have play site which which a lot of people on the call will might might be familiar with it it's we'll be able to kind of broadcast our matches and i think if there's a way to work it out and adam uh adam wants to you know if we get to a point where you know he wants to have the the girls parents watch them and, and fans watch them and they want to play you know some of their matches on on our courts i mean that's that's something that we'll, we'll have to talk with each other and, and work through but i think that's a possibility as well He's willing to uh, sell or rent it to you at a reasonable yeah. price, Adam, is what it sounds like. Two times what we normally would charge. <laughs> hey, it's great to know that we, that we have that, though, you know, with, with international parents and, and uh, everything. It's nice to know that if people can't come, we have a way, if we're outside, for people to be able to watch, which is great. Right, before we go any further, I almost forgot we do have a poll question and a trivia question on our Lunch and Learn brought to you by Sharonville Federal, Federal Credit Union. Let's start with the poll question, Ty, and we'll, we'll go ahead and throw both these up back to back and then revisit them later on. Uh, poll question, which type of court is the most entertaining to watch a tennis match? Clay, hard court, grass, or carpet? And that is brought to you by uh, – Christopher Trucks. So you get a chance to vote on that. And we'll revisit that poll coming up in a little bit. And I believe Christopher Trucks also brings us our trivia question for the day. We'll give you a chance to vote on that as well as soon as it pops up. And uh, we'll revisit both of these a little bit later on and get the answers. Waiting on the trivia question. There it is. Last year, the Furman women's tennis team achieved its highest ranking in the program history. What was that ranking? 35th, 37th, or 39th? It looks like we have a clear leader in the clubhouse. That also brought to you by our friends at Christopher Trucks. We will revisit both of those a little bit later on. All right, let's get back to the questions. And, boy, they're really starting to come in hot and heavy uh, right now. Uh, for both coaches – uh, JJ, I'll start with you. Just talk about the challenge of recruiting uh, through a pandemic. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not it's not easy. I mean, everything's been kind of pushed back. Um, we're just kind of sorting out our our kind of twenty twenty one class, and, and those NLIs are kind of going out right now to to our guys, and, and we're excited about them. But it's it's been hard. It's been a lot of um, a lot of phone calls not obviously no visits and um, you know, virtually kind of showing them around the tennis center. We're, we're blessed here at Furman um, with the, with the facility that, you know, coach Scarpa and Debbie Southern kind of, kind of bestowed upon us. It, it's a, it's a fantastic facility to be able to present to, uh, to our recruits. And there's very rarely do we, we bring someone in here or, or show, show someone on a, on a video um, and, and have them not be, impressed so it's really show, trying to showcase kind of what we do and uh, and who you know in our facility right now currently Adam yeah we it was a learning process for everyone and um, people that know me my team will laugh my assistant Kylie and I we both have pretty big personalities and uh, we do a pretty good little one-two combo we got some um, possible future dens that might be on the call they can they can attest to that so uh, we did a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of jokes, um, you know, whatever we could do to, to kind of show them what, what life is like at Furman. And, um, you know, we're, tomorrow we're thrilled for signing day. I mean, we, we have, um, obviously you can't say too much now until tomorrow, but we have some girls that are signing that we think are going to really come in and, and um, have a huge impact on our program and, and 
their their willingness to to make a decision without coming to campus uh you know i mean it it was the only choice we gave them uh but we we know they're going to be thrilled to get here um you know one story i would share one of our um seniors is from england and uh, she actually um committed obviously before the pandemic without making a visit and i said i promise everything is is as advertised if it's not when you get to campus you can tell me and the first sentence she said when she walked on campus is, this place is amazing. And I said, yeah, you didn't need to see it. You know, it, it really speaks for itself. So um, on one hand, you're losing our one of our greatest assets, and that's our campus and our people. Um, you know, you get a recruit with either of our men's or women's teams, they're going to they're gonna really like it. And then obviously the campus is impossible to beat. But when we have the rankings for that, it's easy to show it. And then you're just connecting on a relational level and hoping them show where, where you can help their game go. So... Uh, it's been very different, but I, I, it's gone actually really, really well for us. Well, Adam, you're in a unique situation where there is one potential recruit who has been on campus uh, and, and has been very, very uh, much a, a uh, just fantastic part of your program over the last three years. And of course, I'm talking about Katerina Kazarov. For those who don't know, she finished last year as the number 13 singles player in the nation, number 21 in doubles, was the ITA's most improved senior, was a Division I All-American last year, and has the eligibility to come back to Furman for her senior season. So what can you tell us? Is she going to be back on campus or not? Well, uh, that's a great question. We should just put her on the spot, Dan. No, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We uh, obviously we would love to have her back. We'd be thrilled to have her back. It's actually probably one of the most talked about things in college tennis on all the teams we play. Every coach that's scheduling with us right now, they're like, "Hey, before we book this match, is is Kozarov coming back or not?" And uh, she wants to be back. We want to have her back. We're just working through a few a few things. There's actually a lot of pieces to that puzzle with um, getting back into school and and. Um, making sure it's the best fit for, for her with the direction of her tennis and her goals. But um, at this point, I'd say we're very hopeful that, that we'll have her back in, in January. She's blushing, by the way. I, I can see her on the screen. She's blushing. Um, all right, good stuff. Let's, uh, let's continue with the questions. Um, when you get ready for competition – how do you get ready for competition? I'm sorry, when you've mostly been playing each other for a number of months, JJ. Ooh, um, you know, it, it's a, that's a really good question because you can't because th there's tournaments out there to play, and I know some of my guys, you know, they're gonna they're gonna go home, and and some of them have told me they're planning to try to play with with whatever safety protocols are happening in there. Uh, nation in their country or their uh, or the city that they're going back to in the United States so some of them are planning to do that others uh, others might not be able to but you, you really can't it's really hard to replicate uh, you know match uh, match toughness matches that those type of moments um, when you're just playing with each other and, and practicing day to day so it's going to be when we get to the spring um, and when we start playing, hopefully, uh, you know, in mid January, it's going to be the, t the team you start out as isn't going to be kind of where you end up when it comes to early, mid March, early April. It's, it's always a progression. And we always talked with our guys about how, uh, you know, all we want to try to do is improve from, you know, point A to point B in the, in the first day of, of our matches and, and, and try to get better. And we want to be playing our best tennis um, when it comes to the SOCON tournament. Adam, how's the competition been uh, inside the framework of the team right now? It's been, it's been really great, Dan. Uh, we've, we've competed more in practice than we have in the past. In the past, we've been very much working on skills. Uh, and then we're able to play so many tournaments as a team uh, that we don't need as much competition in practice. And we've really, that's one of the many things that's changed. And our girls have done a great job to embrace that competition. And, and one of the things we always talk about is the, the scoreboard that everyone sees is not the scoreboard that we measure ourselves by, right? We're, our goal is to be a little better, like JJ said, and, and to pursue excellence. And, and, you know, the first and foremost thing is, are we, are we growing as a person? Is our character growing? Is our tennis growing? And so those are the ways we try to evaluate ourselves. Obviously, every competitor hates to lose, but um, the girls have done a great job. We've played all kinds of competitions in practice. But like JJ said, I mean, you can't quite simulate it, it like a match. And um, 
you know, a lot of the SEC teams we'll be playing have played three tournaments. And so I think one of our big things we'll talk in the spring a lot about is making sure we control our expectations and we just focus on a, a process oriented mindset. And one of the phrases we've used a lot this fall is we want to have really high performance standards, really, really high expectations of ourselves and how we perform, but really, really low outcome standards because they we can't control them. And, and what matters most is is how you finish and how you're developing. Well, let's uh, let's do what we normally do about this time uh, on these uh, lunch and learn sessions. Uh, each one of the coaches has brought in a, a special guest. We want to spend a few minutes with with each of those because they have uh, both brought in uh, some heavy hitters, uh, pun intended. Uh, on the uh, the women's side, we want to welcome in uh, Megan Donegan Klein, who is both a SoCon and Furman Hall of Famer. Megan, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, and on the men's side, another Hall of Famer is joining us. He was inducted in 2014, John Chesworth. I believe John is here as well. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. There you are, up in the upper left-hand corner on my screen. Um, let's, let's, uh, let, let's start with Megan. First of all, she was a four-time SOCOM Player of the Year from 99 to 2003. Was on the only Furman tennis team to win a round in the NCAA tournament. Career wins leader in singles, and we mentioned – of the SoCon and a Furman Hall of Famer. Pretty impressive stuff uh, for you, Megan. Uh, so congratulations, obviously, on a fantastic career. Why don't you catch everybody up on what you're doing right now? Sure. Um, I am actually back in Greenville. Uh, after I graduated, I moved up to the Triangle area uh, and got a master's degree in computer science at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And I stayed up there, uh, started working in the uh, computer science field up there and I moved back to Greenville in February of 2011. Um, got married. I have two kids. They're two boys that are ages two and six and I actually work locally here for a software company called Copus whose uh, founder and CEO is a Furman grad as well. His name's Andy Kurtz and we do software development. Furman grads taking care of one another. Yeah. T tell me about uh, your, your time here, uh, obviously, and, and how that um, impacted what your future was going to become. Uh, we'll start there and, and then move on to some other things. Sure. Um, so I, I grew up in uh, East Tennessee in a little town called Oak Ridge, which is right outside Knoxville. Um, le led a pretty sheltered life. Um, so Furman was a great stepping stone for me to sort of enter the real world, but still in a you know, beautiful, safe, protected environment. Um, it was a, a really great experience for me to join a team. You know, tennis is an individual sport by design, but, and it's a, it's a lonesome one in the junior tennis world. So becoming part of a team atmosphere when I came to Furman was life-changing for me. So I learned, you know, I met friends that are still friends for life. Chesie and I were actually, Chesi and I were there at the same time, actually. So we have some a lot of good stories with him too. Um, and, you know, I've been in, yeah, that's right. <laughs> How much are you going to pay me? Um, and uh, my, uh, you know, I've been in weddings of my teammates and, you know, we still keep in touch. It's been great. And um, it, it, the, the teamwork aspect and the time management and the experiences and competing have been invaluable. And it's, what's unique about it is that even when I interviewed for my job, when I moved back to Greenville and was interviewing, I still got questions, more questions about my experience playing on a college tennis team than I did about my work experience in the job that I was being hired to do. So employers find it so valuable, like that teamwork aspect, the, the ability to work with different, you know, personalities and working towards a common goal. I mean, I, I still... I'm still fascinated by that. And I tell, you know, anybody who, who listens, who has a kid who's competitive in any sport, the value of being part of a college athletics team and particularly at Furman, you know, I just, it was such a great experience for me. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Adam, when you took over the program, I'm sure one of the things you did was, was try to reach back in, into the, to the history and reconnect your program with some of your top alumni. It doesn't get any better than a hall of famer. Uh, and Megan Klein, talk about what having her interacting with your program means to to you and, and to your players today. 
Yeah, it's great. I get to see we have a we have a our, all of our Hall of Famers are right outside my office. So Megan, I walk past every day. Uh, so when I had to give when I was telling Dan about you, I was like, I got it all memorized right here. I see it every morning. But uh, we actually had Megan come and speak to our team. We we typically have um, you know guest speakers come in, and and our, our guest coach, our faculty guest coach Kathy Stevens, has set a lot of those up for us. And so Megan actually came and spoke to our team last year when when you could do those things in person. And it was just such a, our girls are so focused in on the here and now um, that it was great for them to see um, her being able to apply everything she learned during her time here playing for Coach Southern. And, and also, I mean, what she accomplished on the court, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's quite incredible. So we're, we're very fortunate to have her in the area and to have her, you know, helping us out by, by teaching our players like that. And, and Megan, from, from your side of it, talk about continuing to interact with the program the all these years later yeah i i've loved um you know watching the the teams play when i was up in uh the chapel hill, hill area the some of the regional fall tournaments were up there and i always enjoyed going to to watch those when i could um you know i still have a great relationship with coach southern um and you know like i said it's it's something that's gonna stay with me through life and knowing that there's a group of girls each year that gets to come in and do that same thing like anything I can do that helps, you know, show them how much to try to live in the moment and take advantage of all the opportunities that being part of a team and especially at Furman with the quality of people and coaches that you're going to be around and the faculty. And, um, you know, it's sometimes it's, you get caught up in the, the, you know, the day-to-day -day tasks that seem overwhelming, but, you know, looking back, you know, it, it's, it's a great school and I'm very thankful. Make it don't go away. I want to go to John Chesworth now. John, we were talking about mixed doubles a moment ago. You two would be a pretty formidable pair, right? We've we've done uh, it. Maybe a while back. Yeah, we have played before. <laughs> a long time ago, maybe. But. A long time ago. Uh, John was a four-year letterman here at Furman. Uh, he uh, partnered with fellow Furman Hall of Famer James Cameron to earn All-American doubles honors for their 2002 NCAA doubles championships, advanced to the quarterfinals uh, that year and finished as the number 38 ranked pair in the country. Mentioned that he is a uh, Furman Hall of Famer, finished 2002 ranked 55th in the country uh, as a, a singles player and uh, is joining us here today um, here on our Lunch and Learn. John, it's, it's great to catch up with you. Just tell everybody what you've been doing. Yeah, after college, uh, I stayed in uh, Greenville, South Carolina for a while and uh, coached tennis for a little bit. And um, I decided I didn't want to keep doing that. For um, I liked it, but I wanted to try something different. So um, I'm now in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm in insurance, uh, specialized in property and casualty insurance for uh, uh, businesses and look into evaluating captive insurance programs for them. Um, so that's uh, what I've been doing. I've got a, um, a son who's 10, and then I've got a stepdaughter who's 10. And so uh, they keep uh, life pretty full when I'm not working. Um, but also I try to play a little bit of tennis, uh, not as much as I'd like at times, but um, a couple times a year I get the bug and get out there and I'll play hard for about a month and then that's it for another few months. So. <laughs> JJ, I'll ask you the same question I asked Adam. Just talk about what it means to have a guy like this associated with your program. Well, I mean, John has been a great for for me. Obviously, when when I took over, it, it was you know Furman men's tennis has a has a history um, and a legacy, un, unlike a lot of of programs. I spent some time at at Stanford uh, with my dad, and that's that's a serious legacy as well. But when you talk about kind of the stuff. That, that Coach Scarp has done and um, the, the players that have played for him, uh, like John, um, it's, it's, been really, it's been really great to have them around and, and kind of help me out and um, keep me assured of myself um, and give me support. And, you know, it's just been, we were, we were hoping to have Ned on here as well today, Ned Caswell, which I know some people are familiar with. And it's, it's just been, when I took over, it was really easy to see kind of how important, you know, Coach Scarpa's legacy was to them. And so it was important for me to kind of reach out and to all the alumni and kind of bring them back 
back into into the fold and it's it's been great to have them around for sure john do you enjoy interacting now as kind of an elder statesman for lack of a better term with the current generation of Furman tennis players well and um, I do think JJ's done a phenomenal job since he uh, started as head coach of trying to bring every uh, a lot of the alumni together again and uh, I think he has realized how important uh, coach Scott was to uh, to us all and uh, he meant so much and um, I'm really appreciative of how he's uh reached out to us and dealt with us. And um, I know I can still do a better job of probably helping you out, Coach. But uh, anything you need, I'm here. So just let me know. Cheers. Uh, I'll go throw this out for both of you. Uh, and I'll start with <clears throat> with Megan. How important is it for you as an alumni to see the, the women's tennis program be successful at Furman? Because uh, obviously you played under a legend. Uh, and Coach Southern, uh, and, and this program has been established for a long time. How important is it for you to see it maintain and even continue to grow? I, I mean, I, I'm super excited how well Adam's done. I mean, playing, the you know, the, the stronger the teams get, the better the schedule, and, it you know, it just snowballs from there. So having ha, having that success build, more people hear about the school, you get better players coming in, better opportunities. Um, you know, I know we sort of – I think we all have the competitive spirit. So we still, I think my team still holds the one, the one thing he's vying for, which is a win at the NCAA tournament. But um, so it's fun. It's fun to watch it. It's fun to see records get broken. Um, and, and clearly there it's just going up from here. So he's done a great job and, you know, we're all proud of everything that's happening. And, and John, kind of the same thing for you, because you played for a legend, you, you referenced Paul Scarpa. Uh, who <clears throat> who uh, is is a legend not only at Furman but in in college tennis uh, across the board and and uh, he, he set a high standard here that I know JJ is is trying to build back up to. Absolutely, and uh, I think JJ is uh, um, definitely on the right path. And but living in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is uh, SEC country, um, it's really nice if we can keep performing well and. Uh, I don't have to hear about it from all the UT guys or the <laughs> Alabama, Georgia like, and stuff. So, uh, but one thing that I love doing is uh, I am around now a lot of uh, old tennis players from different SEC programs that live in town here. And I compare stories and how our experiences were. And I mean, I haven't heard one of them that talks about their experience, nearly how I feel about my experience at Furman. And um, I mean, I remember when, we were playing at Furman and we'd go play Georgia, Florida, Alabama, all, all those schools every single year. And we'd, uh, we'd get there and we'd see their, uh, what they, the clothes they were wearing, all this type of stuff. And we'd kind of be envious, but now I look back and um, it was the best. I mean, like, unbelievable experience. And I'm so grateful for it. So who's that guy on the screen right now? Uh, he's a lot skinnier than I am. I'll tell you right <laughs> Can we can we reference the the navy blue instead of the instead of the purple? <laughs> that was the first thing I, I thought. Of. I know coach I know coach Scarpa hated purple, so that he used to just buy navy blue for for the guys. And when I got here a couple of years ago, <laughs> there was you know I was looking through the bins of all the old gear, and it was all navy blue. And I was like, what? I didn't, I didn't understand why it was all navy blue. And then I heard the story that Coach Scarpa didn't like purple. And, John, he would, he would hand it to you and say, this is purple, right? That's right. But I'm just impressed that you got a polo with the real collar on it, one a T-shirt, that he'd added the collar to it. That's, That's right. He, he, had, he had collars sewed on T-shirts and given it. To be quite honest, that, those are kind of like, uh, you know, the white unicorns. If I could find some of those right now, I could probably sell them for a pretty a pretty good uh, price because i know there's alumni and guys on my team would kill for some of those right now well and you may be able to find some shoes that have been resold resold yes <laughs> we wear out the shoes he'd send them off to get them resold for us <laughs> well so I, I, mean, I haven't been able to look at any of those in the tennis the center bat. yet i haven't i've been i've been looking uh, i want to echo on one thing that uh that chesie said which is the you know comparing your experiences to to other players um I think that's one of the things that's so unique about Furman is sort of being a mid-level school. You have the opportunity to play these great schools, but then 
the experiences I feel like that we were provided off the court, you know, through the spring break trips or re team retreats and stuff like that. I feel like that, I mean, I'm sure it's not unique to, to just Furman, but that, that was one of the biggest pulls for me, honestly, when I was a recruit was looking through the pictures that coach Southern had out at the tournaments back before, you know, they used the internet to lure you in. Um, you know, she had these photo albums sitting out and it was team rafting trips or the skiing trips or all these bonding experiences that were off the court that built the team atmosphere. I feel like those are not found in the, you know, the, some of the big SEC programs where you get all the gear, you know, you, it's, it depends on what you're looking for. But for me, that that's a big selling point of Furman is the experience that's both mm -hmm. off and on the court. Well, I think we need to point out in that photo we had of you while you were talking that, that you are wearing purple. I was wearing purple. And not, yes. and not navy blue. And my shoes had only had one sole on them ever. So. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, I'll give each of you a, a chance just to kind of make a, a little final statement or do a little wrap up before we go back to the coaches here because we're, we're uh, starting to run up on some time limitations. But, uh, Megan, I'll just, I'll just start with you. It's been great catching up with you, by the way. Oh, no. Uh, thanks for having me. No, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity. And like I said, it, every, I don't, I don't have any negative memories of Furman and I'm so glad to be back in the area and look forward to being able to come back on campus, hopefully sooner rather than later. I have my six-year-old has just started taking some tennis lessons. Actually, he's taking lessons with um, coach Davidson from the golf team. Um, he and his wife are neighbors and friends from Furman um, and our sons are similar in age and friends. So they're doing some lessons together now. So It'll be fun to get them out there watching things live before too long. So happy to be a part of the program for life. <laughs> John. Yeah. appreciate um, being on and uh, I just hope maybe we could do this all in person sometime after uh, the whole uh, pandemic uh, clears. So uh, I think it's, uh, it'd be fun to get together and hear everybody's stories. So. Hey, I was going to mention before we let you, you guys go, you, you and, and Megan have kind of swapped locations has she given you any restaurant uh <laughs> recommendations or anything there in the in the greater knoxville area no but she needs to <laughs> <laughs> don't go find them in oak ridge that's all i'll tell you you're not gonna find it actually big ed's have you been to big, big ed's, ed's pizza. Yeah. yeah big ed. there you go <laughs> yeah, there's a universal everywhere yeah there, there's a universal <laughs> everywhere guys thank you so much for joining us here hall of famers Give them a virtual round of applause, folks. That's that's some heady stuff right there. Uh, let's go back to uh, our coaches. We've got uh, a long list of questions. We'll try to get through them as many as uh, as many of them as we can. Um, with COVID limiting opportunities for competitive tournament play, how do you and your players feel about more juniors playing ITA events? And will open off-season tournaments be the new norm for the future? Who wants to take that? Yeah, I'll go. We've, we've actually, um, before COVID, we hosted a lot of those tournaments. And uh, I think at that time, uh, we didn't think that that was possible. But I think it, at this point, anything's possible. And, and for us, it's just finding opportunities to compete, whether it's an ITA tournament, a UTR tournament, an ITF tournament. I think there's enough ways out there to get a feel for someone's level. So it's definitely not the USTA only pathway that it once was. Um, and I think this time has really shown that, that just getting to play is, is important. So wherever the kids can play and hopefully that means more regional play. So they don't have to miss as much school and spend as much money. And it would make, make tennis more accessible to everyone. JJ, do you anticipate that even once we clear the pandemic, that there's going to be a change to the landscape of how some of these things work? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one, like I, like I prefaced before, I think there's the silver linings and some of this stuff is, is you find new ways to do things and then they might work better than, the old ways or, you know, you know, sprinkling in some new stuff. So um, like what coach was saying, I think, you know, you, there's not just one pathway anymore. Like when, when I played growing up um, of just playing in USTA uh, sectional and regional and national tournaments that you, you can go play and uh, these juniors can go play on your campus against your players. You know, you can, you can see in there, you can, <laughs> couple of guys over the summer were like, Hey coach, I'm going to be playing this tournament. They have play site. Can you log on and watch me? So, you know, there's, there's some of that with the technology. And I think, um, 
you know, all, all of it's useful. It's all, it, it's, it'll be interesting to see how it kind of plays out in the next few years. All right. Next question from Steven says, uh, can you give us an idea of how competitive it is to actually get uh, on one of Furman's tennis teams and, and talking about, say, if you were the number one tennis player in the entire school district, the size of Greenville County schools, what's, what's that competition level like? And, and is that good enough to, to play at this level? Um, that's a, that's a really good question. So I've had, I, I probably get, and, and Adam can attest this, I probably get, it goes in kind of ebbs and flows, but right now I'm getting about 12, 12 emails a day from potential recruits. Um, and some of them, you know, in Furman such a great academic institution that, you know, half of them or three quarters of them are disqualified because of their academics. Some of them don't have the, the, the tennis aspects to their games. And um, then you kind of, kind of figure it out. The, I think the real hard part nowadays is because of the extra eligibility because of COVID you're finding a lot less opportunities uh, as a junior tennis player right now, because the first thing that I think myself, Adam, and a lot of other coaches did when there was an extra year of eligibility given is you start recruiting within your team, within the team you already have on who, who do you want, you know, what players are going to come back, how are you going to work on that with your, with your scholarships and things like that. So it's been hard because as far as, you know, my program, it's actually the, the walk-ons that might, come they, they actually are getting better and better and better because there's a, there's just shrinking opportunity size for junior tennis players right now with especially men's programs getting cut right so programs getting cut extra eligibility so um it's just it's much more difficult which means the, the level that i'm looking at actually is increasing adam from your standpoint when I, when I started at Furman, one of our goals was, you know, in recruiting, you want to win your state, right? If you're not winning your state, you're probably not um, having the right direction of your program. And my first couple of years, there wasn't a player with, within the state that was actually good enough to help our program go where we wanted to go. So we actually have two girls from, from the state of South Carolina now. Both were very, very strong juniors in the state. Um, but I would, I would kind of expand that question from not just the best in the school district, but the, you got to be one of the best in the state to – to make it onto either of our teams. And, and let's be honest, as we have already heard referenced here, this is an international game. So you do a lot of international recruiting as well, both of you. Yeah. And, and Dan, I think there's a new, uh, this thing called UTR now, which is a universal tennis rating, which essentially gives a rating from a rec recreational player all the way up to, uh, to the, the best players in the world. And I think every coach kind of has a, a degree, you know, a level, uh, a range of where they're looking for certain players, um, whether it's scholarship players, walk-on players. And um, it's, if you're not within that range, it's, it's really difficult. And like coach was saying, it's, it's, it's hard to find guys um, that will help, that will help your team and, and hit and kind of, have the academics as well at Furman, but when you find those players, they're they're generally really worth it. They're great great additions to your program. For both of you, um, <clears throat> is it difficult to keep your players motivated without matches to play? We've talked about competition uh, and, and how you're handling that, but what about the motivation aspect of it? I thought I thought going into the semester that would probably be a challenge. Um, I think even amongst some of the best teams and cultures, the fall can be long. We're basically year round, um, unlike some college sports where they're in season and then and have a very long off season. We, we are pretty much in season year round. And I think that's a, been an opportunity for our team's culture to kind of show through. And, and um, we have some upperclassmen that are still very much engaged in the process of getting better. And so we haven't had a dip in motivation one bit, um, which has really been impressive. I think some of that's because we started a little slower than usual and we've continued to raise the standard every week. Um, but I think a lot of that has to do with the culture of our team being, um, they have such a desire to work hard and improve that um, I thought we'd have an issue with it, but we haven't had one, one issue with it. 
JJ, you've mentioned a couple of times about different things that you've done this fall that may become the new normal. Yeah. Uh, and then this question kind of leads uh, into that. Is there one thing you've learned this semester that you're going to want to maintain now as a regular part of your program for years to come? You know, this, this fall is just really, it's been challenging as a coach, but it, in a good way. And it's actually forced Sasha and I to be kind of more inventive and keeping things fresh um, because it is, you know, it can get monotonous um, when you're not kind of going out and traveling and competing. And it's just day in, day out. Our, our guys, you know, they don't really leave campus, right? They don't. So when they come out to, to tennis, it's, it's, that's kind of their, uh, their break from, from reality and a little bit. And you try to just kind of keep it fresh for them and, and have them compete a little bit with each other and, and have them compete with all other, other guys. And um, that's all, that's all you can really do and just try to keep them motivated as possible. And um, my guys to their credit, just like Adam's, Adam's girls have been is um, they really use this time well. So it's, it's, it's good to see. Any, any little wrinkle Adam that, that you've added during this time, that's going to become a permanent part of what you do. The, the focus for the week is, is probably one that I'd, I'd never done before. It feels like camp to me. Um, but we've had a, we've had transition week. We've had offense week. We've had defense week. If I had it my way, we'd have a whole week focused on the slice because modern tennis players, especially on the women's side, want to hit the ball hard and flat, maybe a high heavy week. I don't know. But the other thing I think is just the benefit. I'm a coach that I love the competition side and we typically end up having some girls competing every week. Um, and I think just seeing the benefit of a training block, a block where we're going to just really focus on developing and, and the it's allowed our girls some windows to maybe take a little bit of a little bit of pressure off and focus on the development side and it's actually been I told our girls this week I would put the amount our team has developed this semester up against any team in the country I mean we we came in and have gotten better and better as the semester has gone on and, and I think that's some of that's not having the pressure of the Debbie Southern Fall Classic right away which is what we always tell recruits it's the best tournament in college tennis I mean we had five of the top nine teams in the nation play it last year. And, and this year, UGA was supposed to come as well. So we had six of the top nine. Um, but that kind of changes the way you do things. And, and this way, we've been able to kind of turn up the heat as we go and, and really focus on getting better. And, and the girls have certainly done that. That's for sure. Ty, right, let's go ahead and pull the uh, poll question back up. And then we'll get to the trivia question uh, in, in just a bit. But we uh, ask you uh, a poll question uh, brought to you by Christopher Trucks. Which type of court is the most entertaining to watch a tennis match? And, and uh, our um, viewers on board all said clay was the most entertaining uh, in their eyes by 49% hard court grass and, and carpet uh, stair stepping down, down the ladder. Uh, I'll ask uh, both of you coaches, um, whether it's playing or, or watching, what's your favorite surface? I put clay. I put clay down there, you know, you get longer, longer points typically um, on the men's side, uh, not as many aces. So you can kind of see the tactics um, happening in real time, which is fun. And there's something about people sliding into shots that is uh, really aesthetically pleasing on the clay. Yeah, I, I put clay as well from a coaching standpoint. I think the development, everything JJ just said, as well as the physicality, it makes the sport so much more physical with the length of the points. But I'm 6'6", six, six, so that's the last surface I want to play. If you're asking me what I want to play on, I think I want the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, are you the one person, the 1%? I voted clay, but I, looking back, I should have said carpet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, one of you referenced the universal tennis ratings a moment ago, and, and Nick says that that seems to be falling across all of college tennis on account of limited competitive play. Wants to know how this might impact player confidence and how do you keep your players focused on what they can control versus what they cannot control? Yeah, no, that's, that's a, a fair, I mean, it, it UTR that in the, the numbers typically adjust a couple times a year. And I think, the biggest thing for for anybody that's um, that's playing any kids is it's it is just to focus on you know what you can control because a lot of kids will come they'll, they'll be like oh I beat I beat this 11.2 I'm supposed to rise now and it, it's not really how that works it's really just making sure um, and 
like Adam's kind of referenced a few times, it's just really focusing on kind of your own development and your improvement and, and that sort of stuff comes along um, as you do that, you know, it's a byproduct. It does have an effect though. I mean, even to the point now they're posting those numbers on the draw, which I at one point actually had a call with them and really tried to request them not to do that because I don't think it's, it's helpful for a player to see a number next to somebody's name. I mean, it's one thing if it's a, a seed, you know, put on by the tournament, but when it's a universal number, uh, it's, it's a helpful tool, but it's just that it's a tool. It's not the, the end all be all for sure. That's right. All right. Let's go to our trivia question answer. Uh, the, the question for by Christopher trucks was last year, Furman's women's tennis team achieved the highest ranking in school history. What was that ranking? Was it 35, 37 or 39? And our gallery got it right. 35 was the ranking. 63% of you got that. And that is the highest ranking in school history, which Adam, we're going to improve on in uh, 2021, right? Well, you were a little tricky there, Dan. I think we hit all three of those numbers, actually. I think we, in successive weeks, went 39, 37, 35. So you're, you're a little tricky there, but we'll, we'll do our best to keep getting a little bit better. That's our goal. And the, the, the question was the highest ranking. It didn't say all the rankings. <laughs> the highest ranking. You know what? Just for, for, being, uh, for being a smart aleck, we got a little something we want to put up on the screen. Oh. <laughs> who's, who's this guy? I don't know where you dug that one out of. Uh, we have our ways. The, the, the only, the only, the only, the only saving grace for JJ is that in our time frame we couldn't find one of him. So, <laughs> I'm just happy to see my hat on straight. It used to be a little bit off to the left. I paid Dan line. off. I told, I told him he couldn't. I, I gave him some money not to find a picture. <laughs> you, you gave me a pair of resold shoes. <laughs> let's tell everybody the truth. Oh, goodness. Uh, let, let's see. Final, final question for you guys. I, actually, not even just a question. Let, let's just wrap it up by giving each of you a chance to, uh, to uh, talk about what's going to happen during the break and, and what you hope the spring looks like. I know the schedules are probably still a little bit up in the air as we talked about, but uh, as, as much as you can have plans set right now, and JJ, I'll start with you. Why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the one thing we want is we, we'd like to play every match on our schedule in succession as it as it's currently constituted, but um, it's probably not realistic. So for, for us, the, the biggest thing is is to try to get, get on the courts ASAP um, when we get back in January, get competitive and, and kind of build build our com- kind of competitive tolerance until um, we get to get to mid April so we can really compete for a, for a SOCON championship this year. That's, that's what all, all my guys are looking forward to. That's what they train every day for. Uh, that's what all the hard work, the, the blood, sweat and tears um, and, and, you know, busted shoulders. Uh, that's what it's all, that's what it's all for. Um, and I know, you know, we're really looking forward to it and the guys are just, you know, you can see it every day. There's chomping at the bit to kind of play other people, right. That's the, when you're playing each other every day, it's just, they're, they're excited. They're foaming at the mouth to, to get back and take on another team. Adam, final thought. Well, I would, I would, I would agree with that. And I think it's unique, obviously not coming back after Thanksgiving. So it's created a sense of urgency on our team, which is obviously something we really want. And so I think um, they may take a little bit of time around exams just to make sure they do really well there and um, to do better than they did last semester with a 3.93 is going to be a little bit tough, but they'll, they'll do their best there. And then just to spend, like JJ said, a ton of time on the court. Um, we're, we're working on their fitness plans over the break right now, hopefully really come in in really good shape, um, a lot stronger and, and faster. It's unique to have the six week break. So um, nothing earth shattering there, just getting up and, and um, we call it pounding the stone and doing the work and, um, our schedule starts with a bang. So we need to come in really, really ready. And so I think that we've done what we need to do this fall as a team. Um, we've grown in a lot of ways and our goal all fall was, I kept telling them if we're here and we're training, it's going to be a win. And that has certainly been true and it has been a blast. And so like JJ said, we'd like to play them all in a row just as it's scheduled, but we're just got to be realistic. That's not going to happen. They're going to change. And um, we're going to have to be flexible. We're going to have to be gracious and we're going to compete against whoever, but you know, we always say anybody, anytime, anywhere. So we might get a call and play in two days notice. So you never know, but we're going to play as tough of a schedule as we can and, and try to have the best year we can possibly have. I like it. I mean, that's the only way to approach this. 
right now. You, you have, if, if you're not flexible, uh, it's going to be difficult to succeed. So if, if it's not one of your qualities, you're going to have to learn it. Uh, and, and I think we're all finding that out. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Uh, it's been fun. Adam Heron, Dean, JJ Whitlinger, special guests, uh, Megan Klein, John Chesworth. We appreciate you as well. Always nice to talk to a couple of hall of famers and uh, our lunch and learn series will continue next week when we'll go inside the golf programs here at Furman with, uh, Matt Davidson and Jeff Hull of the men and women respectively. That'll do it for all of us, uh, for Ty Osborne, for uh, Jason Donnelly, all of us here at Furman. I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you and so long, everybody. Thank you.